Podcast City Network. And good evening, everyone. You're listening to another episode of the Deathmatch Russell Podcast. My guest tonight is Indy Mike, Mikey, and we're going to be talking to him. He's from the Squared Circle, Squared Circle, Squared Circle Media, um, Squared Circle Show Podcast, and uh, we're going to talk wrestling and have a great night of wrestling. Let's see what's going on, fans. Tune in right now. Indy Mikey, you're on the line. We're live, buddy. How you doing today? Hey, buddy, how's it going, man? I'm doing great. How about you? Yeah, doing pretty good. You know, just this wrapping up the week, getting ready for uh, the weekend, you know. It's like we're almost through the oh, week, yeah. you know. Uh, just uh, Actually, tomorrow night I'm going to head up to Pennsylvania to see my niece and nephew play in a play. They're both in The Beauty and the Beast, and my nephew is going to be The Beast, and my niece is The Knife. Hey, there you go. There so, you go. so I get to get out of the house and go see them perform, you know. Which is really good, you know? Still there? Yes, I'm still there. Okay, yeah. So that's what I'm doing this week. Uh, tomorrow night, I'm going to head up there. And then set. And then for the weekend, I got... Let's see, what am I doing? Any wrestling shows? Uh, Sunday night, I'll be... Sunday, I'll be at my friend's Backyard Wrestling Federation. Ah, oh, there you go. Yes, and it's free, so you can't complain. <laughs> And, for, yeah, and beer, and just have a good old time. <laughs> there you go. And then go home and wake up the next day for work. <laughs> 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 With a hangover. No, I'm kidding. No, I never get a hangover. What, I, I, what are hangovers, you know? Like, what were they? I don't even know what they are anymore. <laughs> But anyway, so man, what's going on with you? How you you? I see you're getting like big hits this week. You're like getting, you're getting pretty. Uh, you're getting up there. I'm giving you props right now. You know, you're getting your name out there. Like I see your stuff. Yeah. You know, and and I'm also happy to be aboard with you along with with our friends of the Podcast City Network team. Bunch of great guys. Everett. Yeah, man, it definitely definitely is, man. I mean, it's good job. Sorry about cutting you off there for no. a second, but yeah, um, it's like I was telling uh, Everett Lee the other day yeah. on his, yes. um, I found out about it after the show, actually, mm-hmm. uh, Small World. Right. Um, I saw Heather Owens had posted something about the Podcast City Network on her page, and I was like, you know what? Hmm. I'm really wanting to branch out and get, get my podcast out to more, y- yes. more than where it is, and you know, just start to branch out. <laughs> Just grow the brain, and then, and then I hit the, uh, the PCM page up, and then all of a sudden uh, Chris Turner hit me back, and I was like, "Hey." Yeah, let's do this. Listen, man, so. It's so easy. It's great because we're all friends, and that's how I got together with them. You know, like they're just great guys. They launched me when I when I was like down in the blue. You know, I never knew what podcasting really was till I launched it myself. It was horrible. You know, one year. You know, like one year. Now I'm two years going strong. You know. But we start little, and then you big, you know, we jump our way up to the bigger, you know. It takes time. Oh it's, yeah. I mean, I never, you know, you know, it's like, 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 what made you want to do podcasting, like, like interviewing, and you know, like me, it was like, you know, I love wrestling. I just want to help promote it, and and you know, get the interviews. That's the way that we want it, you know. And it's fun as a fan's point of view, and a thank you for wrestling, you know, to all the guys. Exactly. It's- and that's, uh, to kind of uh, bounce off of what you're saying, that's kind of exactly what got me started. I mean, yeah. I've been a wrestling fan since I was a wee little kid, and mm-hmm. um, I've been heavily involved in my local scene here for the past year and a half now. Mm-hmm. And with all the wrestling uh, given to me over my 30 years of life, I just I wanted to, you know, just find a way. And I mean, it's like I... Uh, Man, I was going through a rough point, and I was like, you know, I just 
want to get my voice out there, so I was like, screw it, I'll just start a podcast. And Absolutely. That's the way to do it. Yeah. One thing led to another. One thing led to another, and I'm like 18 shows in, going on three months, and I'm like, hey, this is freaking awesome. I don't know where it's going to go, don't know where it's going to take me, but so far, it's just been really picking up, and it's mm-hmm. caused some pretty good steam, and yeah. part of the podcast that network family now with like Heather Owens and Robin Nelson and, and me, and, yeah. Yeah, and you, and yeah. now you, and now you, so yeah, it's like, we're, we're growing, you know, it's great, because you know what, like, I'm on the East, you know, East Coast Wrestling, so you know what, I, I cover a lot of top, you know, and that's really what you need on the East Coast, you need a Jersey person from the East Coast, Florida, you know, your side of the woods, you know, like your area, you know, because we're, we're bombarded by wrestling, and you know, we're lucky, you know what I mean? Right, right, and when you cover the East Coast and me sticking here in the Midwest, and mm-hmm. just, it's just there's, there's so much rest. Like I've been telling people, there's so much wrestling to be had. Yeah, if you can't find something that suits your likes and your interests, yeah, then you're not looking hard enough. And we really like, help, we, and and we also help promote and help along with KZW, which is really cool. I need, yep, and yep. we and we need. I need to get out there to a show. I'm going to play on that next summer. My trips are going to get booked and help them, you know, because that's what we want to do is be seen by them and help them grow, you know, their audience because they love what we do, you know. They like us having guests exactly. on, you know. I'm sure you're going to be working on getting some guests soon from them too. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. definitely definitely working on getting some guests. I mean, so like I said, I've been I've been involved with my local scene here more yeah. or less uh, for the past year and a half. So I've got a plethora of people that I know that I'm always like, mm-hmm. I'm going to a show and I'm still seeing new people that I haven't seen to this day. I'm like, like I just went to a, um, mm-hmm. I just went to a show that I sponsored on Sunday uh, for a promotion here mm-hmm. uh, called Fight or Die Wrestling. Yeah. Uh, and there was a kid there named J.J. Garrett. That I oh, like, J.J. Was, oh, my God. Yes. I see. He was at a Game Changer. He did a Game Changer show, GCW show one yeah. time. Yes. I saw him for the first time, and I was like, this kid has got it. He, he's like the kid. Shortly after. You throw it. Up shortly after. Yeah. And it's just a matter of time before he shows up on the Square Circle City shows. So. That's great. Because, you know what? He's like one of those guys. Like, he was like. You would see what he does on. Like, we watch his promos and videos and stuff. He reminds me of, like, a younger Colt Cabana. You know? Just a comedy. Oh, yeah. You oh, know? dude. I definitely see it. Yes. Yes. And shout out to Colt Cabana because he's a great guy anyway. You know? Absolutely. You know? So, yeah, definitely shout out to Colt, Colt Cabana because if it wasn't for guys like him yes. and Jim Cornette to a less mm-hmm. extreme extent and uh, Jimmy Jacobs now, like, he was putting out a really good freaking podcast and it's hardly even about wrestling. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love Jimmy Jacobs' podcast. He's great. Uh, but guys like that just, like, yeah. helping influence me getting to do what I'm doing. So. Yeah, yeah, and me too, you know, like, like, come on, there's so many guys on the, you know, on the rosters that we've seen over the years grow in businesses and, you know, indie scenes and just everywhere, look where they, and NXT spots and where are they now and, you know, like, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. And AEW, my, my God, like, I, you, you, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure you notice, like, like a lot of the stars are East Coast, Joey Janela, you know, I know, I've seen him yeah. all, and I've, you know, I've watched his career from, from when he was just 16 years old, you know, like a shitty Carney show, you know, <laughs> but yeah, yep. <laughs> but look, but look what he does, man, he's doing AEW and he runs GCW, his own show at WrestleMania, where can you go wrong with that, nothing, that's professional, exactly. that's a professional in the business, I think, to, you know, he knows what he's doing. Right, and I absolutely love what, what's going on with AEW. That's one thing that I've been hearing a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Cause I, cause I got friends, I got friends here locally that also do podcasts. That, like, the yeah. thing everybody's talking about is AEW. Yes, and I absolutely love what's going on. It's with that. it's I it's a show since yeah. I haven't missed a show since Double or Nothing, and mm-hmm. it's been amazing. Um, I know. My friends have gone to the, the first ones. I'm like, oh, I wish it, it needs to come our way, you know, like New Jersey. I'd, I'd be, like, happy, you know. I would wait for it, you know. i got to go, you know. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, Dean well, Ambrose. I mean, I think they had something at six. They did a little. I think it was a. There was. I didn't. I wanted to go to it. It was called uh, Now Wrestling or something. And they had uh, Dean Ambrose. You know, Moxley was there. I could have gone to see that, but it was. You know what? I was like, oh, you got to pay for a ticket to get into the show, hang out. You know, Six Flags, the usual BS. You know, get your tickets here. Get you know. Then it's food, this and that, and it's like, nah. I'll just watch it online. You know. Oh yeah. And get the lines, you know, and it's crazy, you know. Yep. But, and, and one thing I like that it, it's, it's it's nice that yeah that uh, Dean's back to being John Moxley. Oh my God, man! Um, it's yes, yeah, it's, it's time for the added, the error. Yep, the error of him is coming back to what what it used to be. He the rough tough. Oh yeah. Rough tough John, you know, Mox. Now I don't think I don't think we'll really get fully back to what he was doing in like CZW or anything, no, you're not going to see that. But what we're, yeah, what, what we're getting now is perfect for prime time television mm -hmm. for a more edgier audience. So yeah, absolutely. I mean, look at look like 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 the roster is insane. Like it really is. A, it's it's all indie guys that we know. It's insane. Like look at the, oh yeah. I mean, look at that. You got you got Marco Stunt, the really youngest kid in the business. My God, big shout out to him, you know. I mean, I'll be seeing oh, him. In, most definitely, I'll be seeing him in a couple of weeks in Asbury at the GCW show. I can't wait, you know. Like it's gonna be great. Could it be great to see his face again? You know, he he's like a fans love him. Like he's just this little pint size. And GCW did a backyard. They did that one uh, pay per view backyard wrestling with him and his brother going at it. Yep, <laughs> Logan, you know. Oh yeah. So, it's like, I wish I was there, but, I, you know, that was 4th of July weekend, traffic in the Jersey Shore, forget about it, you know, I was... If, being, I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Backyard show, I think it might have been invitation only, I'm Yes, it sure. was, yes, it was, yes, it was, it was a special invite only, I was a guest, yes, but I did, I sat home and drank beer and watched it on uh, Fight Network, yeah. Yeah, it was, that would have been so freaking fun to be at, man. Yeah. Have you ever, have you been, have, actually, they're coming out, you're, like, that neck of the woods pretty soon in L.A., uh, like, Tennessee, they're doing some shows, joint shows, GCW actually is out that way, I, mm -hmm. be, I believe, for Womp, uh, Womp Wrestling, I think it is, Womp, Womp, or something. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I know a few guys that work QCW shows. Yeah, so, uh, yes, yes. I can easily find out. So. Yeah, oh yeah, I can send you links too. <laughs> I can always send you stuff, you know that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but, um, so yeah, like, uh, oh, actually, you know what? Uh, Dale Patrick's, there you go. He was actually at that backyard show. <laughs> he sure was. Dale <laughs> Patrick's, he's, act he's actually a good bud of mine. Yes. Uh, been cool with him for like two years now. Mm -hmm. um, dude's just—he's a great uh, he, he's a great man. He's he's a cool dude. I've I've met him when I first went out to the IWA Mid South King of the Death Match 2016, and to watch John Wayne Murdoch become the king, you know, of the tournament, yep. and it was great. It was great to see Dale Patrick's and see. You know, all the wrestlers that I really don't get to talk to, but I've had them on, I have them on my podcast, and there's always, on, they always like to come back once in a while. They're they're always welcome, you know? They're just a great bunch of guys, you know? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> That's the last time I, yeah. But Dale, yeah, he usually comes around to the GCW or uh, uh, H2O, the Hardcore Hustle Group, yeah. which, which is down in um, Williamstown, New Jersey, run by the bulldozer Matt Tremont, the one and only. You know, which there's tons of wrestling that goes on through there, and it's nonstop. <laughs> it's like only a, thing, only thing, only thing that breaks my heart about Dale though is he has recently announced that he, he is going to be retiring from deathmatch wrestling by the end of the year. Ooh, he's not quitting. He's not quitting wrestling, but he will be retiring from death deathmatch wrestling. I had him on my show, yeah, a few episodes back, mm -hmm. and he, yeah, he's going to be. Taking, taking a, a, it's going to be a long, long time before he gets back into deathmatch wrestling after this year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he'll, he said he'll still do it if it's like, if the storyline calls for it. Mm -hmm. But other than that, he wants to focus more on like, yeah, the other aspects of wrestling outside of just doing deathmatches. Yes, the wrestling. Yep, yep. There's basic wrestling. Yeah. Yep. You know, you go back to the roots. You know, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, you could change it, you know, you could change it up any way you want. I mean, that's what they do, you know? Like, look at that. Well, Joey Janela. I'm not doing death matches, but 
hell, I'm still jumping off a ladder and making money. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's it's just amazing where these guys, you know, take their careers and, you know, it's they they do it. I, You know what? If it wasn't like me for growing up in wrestling, you know, ECW was my big experience, you know, that was my, like, my way, wave to the, the, you know, to watching hardcore before the deathmatch stuff, you know, the, we trade, yeah. trade tapes and watch YouTube channels and have your friends call you, you gotta get this video from uh, BJW or from Japan, because that's the shit, I mean, it really is the true meaning of deathmatch wrestling, like, you know, the roots, oh, yeah. it really is, and which is really you know, when when Game Changer Wrestling had the show, just, you know, the past death match, uh, you know, the last tournament, we had their tournament, and uh, they announced they're heading to Japan, and they're sold out already. How about that? I mean, it's, like, insane. Good night. I know. And Marcus Crane, the crazy, the snow dick himself, you know, <laughs> the snowman. Oh, yeah. But Marcus Crane's a nut. He is, but he's a great, all, all around a great wrestler, too. He can do it all, you know? Oh, yeah. But every time I've ever seen, every time, yeah, I've never, I've never seen a Marcus Crane match that I wasn't entertained by. So. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's I mean, because he's based out of Chicago, so freelance. He's always at those freelance shows. Or where are you actually? Where are you located? You're actually, um, I, I'm actually in Indianapolis. It's, it's okay. right there in the name, man, and I'm right there in, the, I'm right here in Indianapolis. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. what so locally, I yeah. locally for me is my big. Home, well, I wouldn't say my home promotion. But I'd say my home promotion, <laughs> yeah. I'm talking about the one that I'm actually working for. Yeah. So I guess my second home promotion, the one that I go to mostly as a fan, yeah. would be Bizarre Illusion, which is ran by Trip Cassidy. Oh, cool. Very cool. Trip Cassidy. Oh, man. Yeah, there's another former IWA guy, right? Yes. Uh, yep. Ah, yep. uh, see, I, I, I. You know, I know. It's amazing. It's, yeah, you're locked. That's good. Have you ever, have you ever been to the Freelance Underground shows? Uh, no, I haven't made it up to Chicago yet for yeah. a freelance show, but I, I know that uh, mm -hmm. Trip is partnered, yeah, he's got Bizarro Leach partnered, uh, part, part. partnered up with freelance. Yeah. Um, uh, if you ever get out here to the Midwest, if you ever come to Indy mm -hmm. and you get to come out, uh, Bizarro Leach is the place to be, man. It's ran out of a brewery. It's, yeah. It's a wrestling slash burlesque show. Yeah. Um, it's more of along the lines of your like creepy, strange, and unusual mm -hmm. horror type feel. And yes, uh, the last last show we had, um, oh, shit, who was on there? <laughs> Atticus Kogar was on there. Um, mm -hmm. Shanti Blackheart's obviously going to be on there because you know, well, the trip runs it. So her and Shanti are yes, her and Shanti are uh, yeah, partners. behind everything. Yeah. Uh, Effie was on there for the second time. Effie, I'll tell you what. Uh, Effie gets around. Effie is like New York backyard brawl wrestling, you know, for that, that underground wrestling with Mr. Casanova Valentine, you know? He gets his name. Oh, yeah. He's always around. I, I need to get... To, to get that's guy got to go on my podcast soon. Effie, if you're listening, I'm going to get I you on soon. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely love Effie. And uh, yeah. Casanova Valentine's another great dude. Um, yeah. I met him last October mm -hmm. at a show in Columbus, Ohio called Unsanctioned Pro. Yes, un uh, yes, un Unsanctioned Pro is really a good group. I like talking. Yes, I, I've had yes. it. They're pretty good. They know what they're doing. They're yeah. Running, yeah. Yeah. They run a hell of a show, too, and a lot of good tournaments, oh, yeah, too. Yeah, they do. You know, a lot of tournaments that we, you know, if you're not really into the death, but they do have basic wrestling, too, you know? <laughs> yep. You know? Yep. Yeah. That October show was my only show that I had went to of theirs. Mm -hmm. um, they had some crazy hardcore shit going on, but yeah. they had a solid lucha match. Mm -hmm. Uh... I can't remember. I know Gringo Loco was in the match. Right? Gringo, oh, there's another guy that's pretty. Yeah. <laughs> I love Gringo Loco. My I mean, God, man. Go he, I mean, first. I'm not mistaken, I think he's still on MLW. Yes. And he's killing it, man. And he kills it every time he's on Game Changer Wrestling, you know? Like, my God. He's like a star in himself, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm surprised he didn't get a contract, <laughs> you know? It's like. <laughs> exactly. Man. But AEW listening to us right now, you know, book this guy. We Gringo Loco, you know, we recommend him <laughs> definitely. Absolutely, definitely. You know, I I met him when he went to the uh, Game Changer. Did 
Game Changer Wrestling went to Chicago the one year. It was a deathmatch show. We did a deathmatch show and a freelance underground. The first, the first one they did. It was really cool. It was really cool. It was at a brewery. Freelance was at the brewery before they closed that brewery down the next day, like two days after, you know. And that's, that's when I met Kylie Ray before she, you know, that was the only time I got to meet her and see her wrestle, you know. Yeah, she was, she was supposed to be one of the first Bizarro Lisa shows, but she had just taken her AEW deal. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I think it might have been the second show. I know Sonny Kiss was supposed to be on the first show. Yeah. But he didn't, he didn't show up. Something happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but Kylie Ray was supposed to be on the second show, and she didn't show up either. Yeah, so I got... But to, yeah. since, since then, since then, they've had Solo Darling, yeah. and Mance Warner just won the title last show, so, I mean, come on now. Yeah, I mean, old Mancy, baby. Old Mance, light will, beers and lariats every day, you know? Come on. <laughs> I will I will forever put old Mance over. I always uh, wear his t-shirt, def- support him, love him. <laughs> you know? Got it. Oh, definitely. Most definitely. Most definitely. Definitely a good brother. Yeah. Um, absolutely love him to death. Um, but uh, if, if you ask me who I think is going to be one of the top stars mm-hmm. of the future, it's going to be Mance. Mance is. Absolutely. I mean, he, he's got... He got everything, man. He does. He does, and he can do it all. <laughs> he could brawl. He yeah, can, absolutely. He, you know, he can. He can take. Absolutely. He can take off the pads and go t- straight. You know, he does. It's all business. You know, he could go all business. Oh yeah. You know, and that's what I like about him. He's just that kind of guy that just could go and show you what he has, and then he could go with look at that. Like he's taking. He's wrestling, man. Uh, you know, Matt Tremont. I mean, my God, those two could go at it, at it forever, but, you know, they still have the fire, you know? It's great. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, just to see him at last TOD, like, my God, he, you know, just give him a hell of an old-fashioned beating with the old fans, bring the weapons, you know? Just a classic, <laughs> love it, you know? People loved it. People loved it, you know? So, yeah, you talk about IWA though, man. I'm planning on going out to the PPI, the Test Patty Invitational this year. Yeah. Uh, looking to possibly do uh, doing some of my podcasts from over there. I need to mm-hmm. get up Nick Mano on and see what he says. He oh, says, good old Nick. Nick. Yes, I love Nick. Nick. Good old shout out to Nick. You need to hit him up and see, hey, man, you mind if I run a podcast through here? So it's like, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Because yeah. I've never been out to an IWA show. Mm hmm. But it's definitely it's kind of on my list of, hey, I got to get out here. But yeah. Ch- they stopped running in Memphis, yes. Indiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they're over in Jeffersonville. Mm-hmm. Right. Still there? Oh. I just lost contact. What did you just say? I'm sorry. Oh. It's still there? Hello? Still there? Hello? 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 Yeah. Go ahead. Go- yeah? Yep, got you now. All right. My speaker was unplugged. Okay. I-, I hit my plug. <laughs> I plugged into my unit. Go Hold ahead. on a second. Yep. Uh, okay, there we go. There's a storm coming, too. <laughs> I don't know. Still there? Hello? Yeah, okay, yeah. So what were we saying about, uh, so you're going to make your first, yeah, you know what, I've done that, too. Like, like I've never been to IWA, you know, like a fan, so I took a trip with my buddies, you know, and we loved it. We just loved that trip to the king, you know, the king, and then I went to the hardcore king, uh, the hardcore, the guardians of hardcore, that was really cool too, the first one they did. Yep. Yeah, I know, I know, I know a few guys that are regulars down there, I mean, mm-hmm. I've got, well, I got people that I know all over the place, so I'm not going to drop any names, because... I know a lot of guys, Doug, and yeah, <laughs> we, we know everybody, there's a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of guys like, <laughs> on that scene that we know, it's insane, you know? Oh, yeah. But yeah, IWA, man, it's, you know, look what, well, he's trying to push his, himself also, you know, um, uh, JC there, with uh, Trainwreck Re- Wrestling, too, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a... That's a whole mess. I've, I've seen that. Yeah, it's like, wow, what's going on here? I've talked to him. It's like, oh, it's crazy. But, you know, give him, try, try and try again, you know? Always a, it, yep. 
You know the few people that were actually in attendance for that show? Um, yeah. A friend of mine was actually uh, kind of doing some medic work, from what I understand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for that show. Yeah. So it's like, oh, okay. Crap. That was... Not a good thing. It's like that, I heard about, I mean, it was posted on the internet. Did you see about that, uh, I guess it was a horrible show, that uh, Riff Pro show or whatever it was? Uh, no, I, I know about Rev Pro, but I haven't heard anything oh, about Oh, man, they had, a, they had a, bit, a death match tor- show, and it was horrible. It was a horrible... Huh. They, they had Schlack on commentary. Well, it was it was horrible. G-Raver in a cardboard box spot. I think that was on mentioned on, like, Facebook and t- Twitter. Yeah, just, like, it was interesting. Like, it was <laughs> not a great crowd, you know? They weren't impressed. Oh, Whatever, but wrestling's wrestling, right? It moves on to different places. It is. You know, it happens. We know how it is. You know, it goes down. You don't know what you. We're not the controllers of it. You know, the the owners have problems, and they have problems. You know, yep. They move on. You know, to bigger and better things. You know. Exactly. You know, like and then guys like guys like G Raver and all them. They're not hurting for anything. Like they're all no. They're, they're, there's bookings to be had. As, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Like, I, I just had to, uh, my last guest that I had on mine was the Jim Nasty Boys. I had them on about a few weeks ago. Oh, then and those guys are the hilarious, <laughs> like, they're great. They, they, yeah, they're, your yammer, your hammer, yammer, yammer, you know. We always get that stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, but they can wrestle. And one thing, one thing that they said that really stood out to me, and they said quite a bit, and I'm good friends with those dudes. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing that they said that really stood out to me is like, like they don't need, you don't need a contract, man. Like there's wrestling, there's bookings to get. Like there's 50 states. Mm-hmm. Go find something. Mm-hmm. It's that simple. So yeah. I, I, I try not to worry about what one promotion does or what another does. Yes. It's like, it's like yeah, if you don't like what they're doing, if you don't like the booker, you don't like the promoter and what they're doing, if they're wanting to give you the shitty deal, yeah. you know what? There's other promotions that are willing to, you know, there's always, there's always work to be had. So. Absolutely, it's like I like CZW, I like GCW. I'm a fan. I can't complain. You know, like they'll have a dead well, show. You know, they'll have a dead show, but then it builds up to something different. Like their next, I'll be at the next. You know, uh, what is it? Down with the sickness, and then, or no, no, excuse me. Um, CZW and versus uh, WXW is coming. The German wrestlers are coming from Germany. I cannot, ah, I cannot there wait. You go. That's going to be exciting. Yes, that's going to be kind of like you know. Seeing some talent that's really pushed their ways, you know, in, oh, ger- yeah. in Germany, you know, <clears throat> and a couple of students have been wrestling there for years from CZW, so it's really cool, you know. Also, yep, and they'll be back in the states again, <laughs> so be good to see them, you know. Oh yeah, but then after that's dark down with the sickness, and then that's like ultra violent, you know. They'll bring that back and. Yeah. You have the the die month, you know. You have the you have to have the wrestling die, you know. You have to just have the build up, you know. Exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. It's like game changer wrestling. My God, Timothy Thatcher's coming, and I cannot wait to see him wrestle um, Kyle the Beast. You know, there's another Kyle the Beast is one of those guys that can be another eight. There you go, right? Another guy that could be seen anywhere. Exactly. Yes. Yes, even a Tony Deppin, <laughs> like that guy's already in, booked. I think already I was looking on the list, and he's ready for the PWG, uh, you know, for the next Bola. I'm like, my God. Oh, good. There you go. I know, right? I think that's. Yeah, his... I got a buddy of mine that's looking to go out to Bola, man. I'm super excited to hear what's going on with that. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's a promotion, man. Like, what do you think that when when that first came out? I was hooked on that. I was like, this is awesome. Like, you know, the comedy, then just the wrestling, the matches were just insane. You know, like a promotion like that. Right. You know, that that the promotion like that is like that is what people need to see. You know, it's like a mix of Kachara, Kachara. You know, but yeah, man, I love Kachara, dude. Mm-hmm. And I just saw that clip that some guy, the owner of Chikara, might be uh, making a presence known at your that one show. Quack and Butch. Yes, sir. Yes, the one and only Quack. You know, he will 
He is actually going to be at the next Bizarro Lucha show September 1st. Yeah. Uh, don't know who he's going to be against, mm -hmm. but I'm very excited. It's my first time seeing Mike Quackenbush, and it's going to be a really awesome show. Yeah. Um, Quackenbush can... I can put Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, you're good. As I said, I can put Bizarro Lucha over until I'm blue in the face, man, because they, I mean, they're just constantly, mm -hmm. constantly putting on good shows. So uh, if, if anybody... Yeah. That's listening to this. Uh, if you have IW, uh, IWT, uh, independent wrestling team, I think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, go look up the Star Lucha. Watch everything that they've done because mm -hmm. they put on phenomenal shows month in and month out. Well, so. wait, wait till you see Mike Quackenbush. You're gonna be blown away by his style. Like. It's, he's the, oh, yeah. You know, because he's a veteran. <laughs> he is a veteran. You know, he's been doing it for so long. My God. I'll never yep. forget I'll never forget the first time I ever saw him wrestle at a local... Uh, actually, actually, game actually was actually the original Game Changer Wrestling. It was called GCW. You know, it was JC, uh, GC, uh, JCW. JCW. Like the Juggalo JCW, you know? Jersey Premier or Jersey Championship Wrestling at the time, you know? And and Eddie kicks to Eddie kicks to was wrestling at the time, you know. Like my God, they've had matches together, and like you know, seeing the career, of, you know, Quackabush just launch it and where he is today and doing his thing, you know, running a school and and running a great podcast. One of the best. I always listen to that, and that's a hell of a how he gives you the tips and the trades every time, you know, the tips on on wrestling. You know, in the business, that's what you need. People don't realize that that's pretty a bonus for us to learn stuff behind the scenes too. You know, <clears throat> so yeah, my question. That'll be awesome. I'm glad you're gonna get to see him. I'm jealous. You know, but uh, <laughs> I saw. Uh, it's gonna be an exciting, it's gonna be an exciting show, man. Yeah. Uh, Title, Sugar Duckerton's coming back from over the years. Oh my gosh, Sugar D. Oh man, there you go. Yeah. Another dude that I absolutely love, man. He's been cool to me every time I've ever seen him. Uh, Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be there. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. Mm -hmm. Uh, he's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. Uh, he's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. He's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. He's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. He's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. He's going to be there for the Bizarro Lucha Show. He's going to be very excited to see him again because he's been killing it over there in the UK and doing all that. Mm. Uh, Mitch is going to be defending his title. Mike Blackenbush is going to be there. Uh, Shafty Blackheart versus Alex Kogar. It's going to be an amazing show, man. I'm jealous. <laughs> I wish I was there right now. <laughs> I wish I was up there, you know? I'd be going to see the show every week. I'd be to see all these shows, you know? We got all these roasts. Oh, yeah, man. It's just... Yeah, there is like in New Jersey too, <laughs> you know, to New York, yeah, yeah. to New York, to Philly. Come on, you know, it really is, you know. And I just like it all in general. Like it's it's cool. It's just like we're we're you know we get to go wherever we want to go. You know, it's it's just a trip. Exactly. Day out. I've done sponsorships before with my local companies. I love doing that. You know, that's great. It just helps them. Oh yeah. And and just you know being there to, I remember I I choked on the mic. I didn't. I choked up on the mic one time. So what? You know, <laughs> I got in the ring. I don't know what the hell. This is my hometown. You know. <laughs> Hope, oh yeah. I'll be doing that again eventually if they ever come back. You know, meet the wreck. Please come back. <laughs> so what? Did what? A little ring Did a little ring announcing for my uh, for the first time myself last Sunday at the Fighter Dice Show, man. Yeah. It was nuts. Yeah. I was I was excited, man. It's just mm -hmm. it, it, it was kind of, it was it was kind of surreal because it was it took place in the same venue that I went to my very first indie show. Mm -hmm. So it's like I kind of came full circle, man. So what were your who? Uh, <laughs> let's go back to old school wrestling, man. Like what what, what what who what what did you get? What were you into when you grew up? Like who was your man? Well, when I was growing up, you know, I was the typical WWF, WCW kid. I watched a lot of both of them. Mm -hmm. uh, didn't really get much into ECW because I didn't really catch them on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, I got an Undertaker tattoo on my uh, yes. left arm. Yes, yes. If, if that tells you anything, uh, 
Um, You're a Taker fan for your life. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. I don't have a choice now. So. No, it's, it's marked on your skin for life, you know? <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, yeah. Other favorites of mine growing up would have been like uh, British Bulldog and Owen Hart, uh -huh. Brian Pillman. Yeah. Um, the Road Warrior. Mm -hmm. uh, God. Pick a, pick a face of Mick Foley. It really didn't matter, man. I loved anything that Mick did. Mick is um, one of those guys you can have a conversation, and he's great. I've had those conversations, you know, at shows. He's just one of those guys you can talk to. He's great. I miss him. Oh, yeah. You know. But then there's other guys from, like, WCW that I used to love watching, like Ultimo Dragon and Psychosis. Mm -hmm. Yes. Man, I really love what they had going on with them. Cruiserweights back in WCW. Mm. Um, God, I, I've been so all over when it came to wrestling. I didn't really start getting more in depth until like TNA came around. And right. I started watching Ring of Honor. And, mm -hmm. uh, God, I started watching Ring of Honor back in 2009. Mm -hmm. And then that just really pushed me further along as a fan, you know. That's like me. I was. Yeah. Like Ring of Honor, you know, I was lucky. I was I didn't catch it the early on days, but I got to like go to Edison, New Jersey, watch CM Punk, you know, in the fight, you know, make his departure versus Austin Aries, you know, like that was like, a, you know, before signing to WWE, you know, and like just seeing like all these guys just go, it was like great. I got to see them at the timing, you know, like now, it's, you know. Look at Brian Danielson, my God. Like, there's a guy. <laughs> I love seeing him every time, you know? Absolutely. The even, with what he's doing, even, with, even with what Brian is doing right now, I still love him to death, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if he, you know, if he had kept his... If he, imagine if he went back to his old character, man, like the original Brian Danielson. Oh, God. It would really... Uh, yeah, it, people would be like, what is this guy? They need to catch this. because I, Yeah. I miss the American Dragon so bad. Yeah, I I mean, I remember going to, it was like a Asbury Park Convention Center. They had this super, it was the Super Juniors Tournament was going on in a snowstorm. So, <laughs> it was like, okay, we had Jamie Noble, we had Spanky, like, this is awesome. Here's American Dragon, Brian Daniels, and CM Punk, and Cole Cabana, and Homicide, and like, it was like, it's like, wow, this is the real deal. I get to see it at a perfect time, you know, like I just said, you know. And of course, going to the Hammerstein ball fruit, Ballroom a couple times for the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, final battles, that was pretty awesome, you know. Oh, yeah. Mm. See, I had only ever been to Ring of Honor once because they they only came to Indianapolis a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, but boy, what a time I had! Um, that was 2016, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam Cole was there. Uh, Roger Strong was there. Red Dragon were there. Mm -hmm. uh, we know what they're doing now. Yeah. Uh, Dalton, Cast Dalton Castle was there. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah. The main event, uh, it was uh, eight man tag match. I can't remember. I, I know who all was in it, but I just don't remember what in order they were tagged. Mm -hmm. I know that it was War Machine, the Young Bucks, um, mm -hmm. the Briscoes, and I want to say, was it the Motor City Machine Guns? I'm not sure. It might have been the Motor City. No. Mm. Shit, I can't remember. But I know that the yeah. Briscoes. War Machine and the Bucks were in it, and that was so freaking cool, man. Because like I had never really, yeah. all I had ever done to up until that point, right, was like the regular WWE show. Yeah, you know what? So listen, listen I'll tell you a story about Ring of Honor too, which I got lucky. And you know, go ahead. All right. Oh okay. um, no, that was my first like, yeah. actual what I would consider an independent show. Yeah. Um, so seeing these guys, like Dalton Castle walking right in front of me was freaking cool, and mm -hmm. seeing the young bucks over at their table, and then going to the merch booth and seeing Steve Carino just chilling right there, minding his own business, I was like, oh my god, that's freaking Steve Carino just sitting right there, that's the coolest shit. Mm -hmm. um, but it was such a good show. Yeah. Uh, I remember one thing that really stood out to me was Christopher Daniels. Mm -hmm. He was there, but he was not Christopher Daniels. He was doing Curry Man. Oh, the so, Curry, yeah, the Curry gimmick. The Curry gimmick, yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> 
But I'll tell you a cool Ring of Honor story. I flashback from flashback. They, there used there was a federation in Philadelphia. It was called Pro Wrestling Unplugged, right? I and uh, I re- I went to a show. I think it was one of the sh- it was Necro Butcher and J- uh, Samoa Joe actually going at it. Jellyhead Jellyhead at the time. Or no no Corporal Robinson versus Necro or Joe or something. And uh, the next well guess what was in town? Ring of Honor was at the Armory that night. So yeah. So Ring of Honor was doing the C. It was the CZW versus Ring of Honor with John Zandig. Oh. It was the Zandig Jim Cornette. 